Okay, we're live. James Monique speaking, trainingsites.io, um, OpenAI's image generation tool. Very, very cool. I've had 24 hours to play around with it, and I want to go over some of the things that I've learned, not only about using it, but more importantly, how do I use it for my courses? I'm creating online courses. Maybe I'm doing uh, lessons or different lessons, or I'm doing some kind of slide deck or PowerPoint thing that I'm going to turn into a course, or I've got marketing material that I actually want to put together. Um, and traditionally, I may have gone to Canva, or I may have bought stock photo, or used an image program to try and figure out how to overlay text and all those pieces. But what can I do with this brand new tool that's going to make that job a lot easier and still give me the kind of content that I need for the purpose of creating educational content? In my case, I focus on courses. So, you know, traditionally, when you're creating images, um, the whole idea is to make sure that there's consistent images throughout an entire course, whether it be a full course, a mini course, micro course, but any time of educational content, I would think that you want to have it kind of recognizable so that it's woven or relevant to each of the lessons and the and, uh, the course that you're uh, working on. And this, you know, this can be in a PowerPoint presentation or it can be actually embedded images directly uh, into the content. And I've talked about a couple of these. One of the ones I really like uh, is one from napkin.ai. I like that one a lot, but there's other times when you want to or need to create something. Uh, and here's an example of one that I actually created yesterday just to show in this case how well you can add text to images that are generated. And this image that you see right now was generated by OpenAI. And uh, the reason it looks good is not because I gave a real fancy prompt on the OpenAI uh, and ChatGPT to generate this. It's because I creatively plagiarized one that already worked. I basically took it, modified it a little bit, and got this particular image. Now, before I go show you the original in the prompt, um, I want you to take a look at this on the screen right now and just realize a couple of neat, neat things with this. And it's mostly about the text because anytime that you're creating educational content, not anytime, a lot of times when you're creating educational content, you have to have text that supplements or identifies parts or pieces of the idea in the image. It's just not about doing a photorealistic image that you might have seen uh, on the actual sites, but it's how do I make this take something complex and make it simple for someone because I'm transferring the ideas, not entertaining someone with a, a cool image. So how did I come up with this one? And then we'll take a look at actually some prompting styles and what you might want to think of when you're creating content for online courses and educational content. So how did I come up with this? Uh, basically, I stole it and when I say stole, this is what I did. Uh, and again, I'll put the link to this. This is the OpenAI uh, website where they had news. And this image that you see here was part of the announcement that OpenAI came up with. And this was a demo that they created. Now, if you haven't been here, go take a look at it. Uh, and there's some cool stuff to see. But what I suggest that you do is don't look at the images as much, but above each of them, you can see that it has selfie view of the high five, but it also says, here it is, a wide image uh, taken of a, with a phone, uh, taken uh, with a phone of a glass whiteboard in a room overlooking the Bay Bridge. The field of view shows a woman writing, sporting a t-shirt with large open AI logo. The handwriting looks natural and a bit messy, and we see the photographer's reflection. But look what happens here when we click on read more. This is a very specific prompt. So what I did is I basically copied the entire prompt. And I copied it, and all I did is I changed the text that was supposed to show up on the image. And when I did that, what I got was this image. It's different than the one that they got, but similar in respect to the text shows up perfectly. And the great part about the text is I couldn't find any spelling errors on it. Um, it's legible, no spelling errors. It shows up well enough that it can be used there. So that's a photorealistic one with a lot of text on it. Very, very, very helpful uh, when you're doing these kind of materials for online courses and training material. Um, 
Now, having said that, photorealistic is cool, and there are cases where you might want to use text with photorealistic ones. Um, a lot of times, you know, photorealistic image isn't helpful to the actual idea. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to show you uh, a way or an example of how you can use this brand new tool to take a complex idea and turn it into a simple image. And I was doing that a little bit earlier uh, today when I was working and uh, I was putting together a little bit of content for a course that I was working on with someone. And this whole idea behind this was uh, it was about trying to figure out crowd density uh, in a security kind of situation. Uh, and the whole thing was, it's like, how do you know what's a safe crowd? How do you know what's a limited movement crowd? And how do you know what's a dangerous density? And how do you know what is like super crowded time to bolt? And it was that crowd size that if you look at it, it shows up as a bunch of text. There's no um, easy way to try and get an idea of a crowd size based on some numbers when it would be a lot easier to visually represent it. So this is actually the one that we came up with and I'll open this one up and then show you the different prompt on this. So here's an example of one where it had the four and instead of looking at the bottom of the screen here where it said, uh, hopefully you can see that, I'll move it off to the side. This one says 10 square feet per person, safe movement. So if I'm looking at the text, what does that actually mean? And how is it relevant to the other sizes? Well, let's take a look at five square feet per person, and that's limited movement. And then finally, there was three square feet. And you can see that it actually went down to one where it was like super crowded and the feet. So you have an idea in perspective of what an actual crowd size looks like instead of just the numbers. So there's an example of how you might want to consider using this tool to take something complex and make it simple and not worry about how can I make an image that is photorealistic or that is really, really cool. So that's just an example I wanted to show you. And in terms of how we generated that, that particular prompt was, let me just make this a little bit smaller so that we see it here and I'll close that one. This one, the prompt was, uh, hopefully, let me see if I can make this a bit bigger. Let's see if we can, no, that's as big as I can get it. But it was create a professional overhead view comparing four different crowd density sizes side by side labeled, and it was there. So um, image should be clean, educational, and suitable for security training manual. So that's just an example of how, you know, you can use uh, uh, this tool to create information that is important to you. So having said that, here's my little tip for moving forward. Uh, and this is what I've been doing and it's worked pretty well for me. And that is whenever you're creating any of these particular prompts, um, I basically ask the tool, ChatGPT, and or another tool to create the text to generate the actual image. Uh, there is some points that I can leave you with and I put a, li a link to them. If you haven't already, like go to trainingsites.io forward slash join. That's our free community. I have all the prompts and stuff that I've used here as well as the notes on this video. It's free to join uh, the community there and love to have you there. But in terms of actually putting it together, you got to get pretty good at writing the prompts or creating the prompts so that you can actually uh, put these together. Um, and, you know, these ones can be done as somewhat photorealistic very photorealistic. It's up to you on how you want to create it as it relates to the content that you're using. So I use one uh, AI tool to create the prompt to give to another tool, and then I create iterations of it. And again, just take a look at your content and say, is this something that's complex? How can I make it simple? Ask another tool to say, hey, I have this idea or a text. I want you to create a text description that I can give to open AI image generation to represent it in a visual way and it will create a prompt for you. So that's pretty cool use of it. A couple other things just that you wanna, you know, kind of think about it when you're doing this is the cool thing with this tool that I'm just playing around with now, there's two things that uh, I jump out, three things that jump out for me just to consider that makes it different than a lot of the other ones. 
The first one is, is that it is super at text. So anytime you have images in your course creator and you need to put text on an existing image and or create an image, this type it out word for word what you want. And it has a really, really good uh, engine, I guess, to embed that or overlay it on top of the images that you want. Uh, again, it's super at doing that. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that you can add your brand kit to ChatGPT that allows you to use your fonts, your colors, your sizing, everything um, that you want the images to be or have on the images or the style of images, that stuff can actually be incorporated into them, which I think is a huge, uh, it, it's a huge help when you're creating or using a, a, an image that grows or changes uh, throughout each lesson, having the image be consistent to the previous image moving forward. And that's the other thing that happens is that consistency. Uh, if you go and take a look at any of the demos that were created on the OpenAI introduction, and I'll here, I'll bring this one up for you just for a second again. The first image was here, this one here, and then actually create a selfie view of the photographer as she turns around to give him a high five. That's all the iteration required. You can see that the text is identical and it's in the same perspective, the same context. So these tools allow you to add your text, add your brown, and they're consistent across all of the different images, which is something that I really think uh, is one that we're gonna be able to use when we're creating uh, course content. So here's come by kind of a little checklist. And again, I'll put this in the notes at trainingsites.io, but you want to make sure that your prompting is not vague. That first one that I showed you that they had for the women on the on the glass whiteboard, it looks like it was one sentence. It was a huge sentence that was specific as to what the person wanted. So you're going to actually have to get creative and think about what do I need to type in to actually get the image that I need that represents that image uh, or complex idea and makes it into a, a relevant image. Um, don't be un unrealistic. Uh, you know, the images they showed uh, on that particular release, some of them were the eighth iteration of it. So they had to run it eight times with different variations of the prompt to get the one that they actually showed in the news release. And you want to make sure that you use terminology at all possible. If it's photorealistic, um, you want to use terminology that the large language model understands. So if you're using, you know, the rule of three or... Um, you know, if you're using uh, things for cameras, whether it be perspectives or lens types or portrait styles or all of those different kind of pieces that you find out about or you should learn about, try and use ones that are industry accepted or commonly accepted for the type of image that you want. Um, and, you know, don't enjoy or don't forget that some of these models are better for some things as opposed to other ones. Even though OpenAI and the ChatGPT is a great tool, it may not be the best one for you based on what it is that, you're, that you want. The cool thing, of course, is that it's available free and it's built right into ChatGPT that allows you to do things quickly um, and then um, you know play around with it and have some fun with it. So I'll put a couple other pieces just to kind of think about on this one, um, but just spend some time playing around with it and get creative thinking, how can I do something more than an image of a cat on a hat? How am I going to use this in a course? How am I going to use this in individual lessons? How am I going to use this in PowerPoint presentations or slide decks that I do? How am I going to use this in webinars that I create or marketing materials? All of these things, uh, emails, all of these things are ones that we run into as course and content creators. This tool is here, ready to use, throw your prompt in and your way to go to the races. So have some fun. Let me know below what happens. Uh, and again, if you haven't already joined trainingsites.io, love to see what you generated and the course that it's for so that you can share some of your experiences with this week's, yeah, it was this week's big news uh, from uh, OpenAI. My name's James Maduke. It's trainingsites.io, uh, here to help you start, build, grow your education business. Like and subscribe to the channel, all that cool stuff. And we'll see you again tomorrow with another great video.